welcome back. Um, so we're getting into our first conversation and a lot has been said about prices of foodstuffs spiking in recent weeks. It's actually not news that the prices will go up as they always do. It's the rate of increase which tends to alarm people as they wonder how they will survive on their income, which has always suffered and um, because our incomes don't really go up do they the rate of increase in prices has been confirmed by the inflation rate which has attributed recent increases to foodstuff prices going up what the inflation rate of 9.7 percent for august won't tell you though is how this will affect the price of your kinky or other staples now i had a bit of a shock this weekend because i went to the market and um, with my budget because i know all the prices and i had my 400 CDs and I had my full list, tomatoes, chicken, green pepper. And I, was, I thought I was sorted out for the week um, until I started to buy stuff. And then I realized, you know, tomatoes had gone up from about 22 CDs a bucket to about 35 CDs a bucket. Um, broilers had gone up from about 45 CDs for live chicken to about 62. Layers had gone up. That's the hard chicken that we make for, that we used to make soup for. Um, that one had gone up as well to about 37, almost 40 CDs, also from about 28, 30. And so my 400 CDs, which I took, it didn't get anywhere. I wasn't actually able to buy half of the things um, on my list, which included of course rice oil batoshito ginger garlic all those little little things have gone up and so when you go to the market with the same amount of money that you usually would you can't buy the things that you want to buy but we wanted to confirm that this is definitely a trend that's running across all markets and not just the markets on my side of town or on your side of town so we sent israel out this morning so he's gone to malata markets and he's going to have a conversation with um, some of the market women to find out about the price is going up and why the prices are going up and why the difference is so much because it's so much i used to buy serilac for 13 14 cds the may serilac the one with milk which we chew no i don't add water and i had to buy it at the weekend for almost 21 cds that's almost six cds and um, just on a tin of serilac so it's, it's it's very 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 difficult at this point anyway i have anthony morrison he's the ceo of the chamber of agribusiness and um, joining us this morning on Zoom, and perhaps he can help us to understand what's happening that's making all these prices go up. Good morning, sir. And a very good morning to your viewers. Thank you for giving us your time this morning. So have you noticed that prices have gone up? Yes, um, the Chamber has been following these developments since um, last year, um, two months to the election, we noticed that um, prices of foodstuffs uh, have started taking some upward increase. And uh, we alerted ver various stakeholders uh, to be concerned about the emerging stories. Uh, there were a number of factors that account for this current situation. Uh, but um, as the conversation goes on, I'm, I'm sure we can uh, look deep into some of these indicators. No, I mean, we can definitely just dive straight into them because the question on everybody's mind is obviously we expect that there would be some sort of, you know, hikes. Fuel prices have gone up. You know, the dollar is not doing that well. You know, the pound is massive, almost eight, eight CDs, you know, to a pound. So obviously you're expecting that, you know, some of these prices will go up. But it's, it's how much the difference, how much the difference is. Could you want to just share with us some of the reasons why this is happening? Yes, certainly. Uh, you know, when the COVID came in um, and uh, we had to go into a lockdown, uh, there, were, there were some panic buying. Um, at that time, we saw more than 60% increase in most of the commodities, uh, from dairy to maize to rice, should, uh, everything went up almost by over 60%. Now, um, after the COVID, after seeing such upward uh, increase in prices, sometimes it takes, it, it takes some time for the price to stabilize. At that time, the chamber knew that it was going to happen. We called on government to institute some form of uh, mitigations to cushion uh, buyers and consumers, but that wasn't done because we could have used buffer stock to do that. Now, moving forward in May this year, um, we saw earlier on around January that prices of maize uh, has started picking up tremendously from 58 cities per 
50 kg to 80 there about 80 cities for the same 50 kg wow. now some of these things that account accounted for it at that time was that um, as a country first of all we failed to put in Okay, um, I, I think uh, there's an issue with the sound um, on Anthony's, Anthony's Zoom. Okay. Um, at that time, we failed to put in a, a national food security pandemic uh, strategy, which the chamber called for at that time. Now, if we have done that, we would have prioritized the major commodity areas, uh, provide the absolute uh, food banks in strategic central locations to caution for this. But at that time, uh, the hotels have gone down. They were not operating. So those who did vegetables, those who did, uh, or those who are into pork, uh, poultry, those who are into fruit, they all lost because majority of them do supply to the hotels. And we also remember that the schools also were closed down. So there were a lot of losses on the side of the producers. Now, when the COVID uh, protocols were uh, kind of reduce. Um, these farmers have to go back and produce the same thing. If you do remember, um, your own Odilia Fori was in Ashanti region, where over one million worth of eggs were virtually destroyed because they, they've gone bad, and that was a loss. It takes uh, almost fifty-seven pesos to feed one bed a day, and uh, if you should feed a bed for several weeks and at the end of the day, you will not be able to sell your produce is bad. Now, some of the indicators that we've seen, first of all, COVID. COVID on the international scene, we saw prices of uh, imported uh, produce jumping the, 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 the cost of container that used to be $11,000, jumping from $11,000 to almost $23,000 per container. That is over 1,000% increase. And um, you expect that farmers who use most of these uh, inputs, fertilizers, agrochemicals, the machinery, um, the seeds, then on the side of the poultry farmers, they use a lot of uh, vitamin. Um, these are the additives that we call them. So you have the, the lysine, the methion. Okay, I think we're having a bit so, of a... So uh, okay. the increase in the importation of some of this uh, had impact on productivity. And let's also not forget that we saw. OK, so I'm going to move to um, Charles, Charles Nyaba, whilst we try to sort out um, the the delay issues with Anthony's um, Zoom. So Charles Nyaba is the head of programs and advocacy, peasant farmers. Association. Good morning, Charles. Good morning. <clears throat> Hi, thank you for giving us um, your time this morning. So I'm talking to um, Anthony from the Chamber of Agriculture, and he's saying that, for example, um, I think he mentioned maize has gone up from about 58 CDs per 50 kilogram bag to about 80 CDs um, for that same 50 kilogram bag. What's going on? What's really, really going on? Uh, thank you. Let me say good morning to everybody. Let me also greet uh, my friend, uh, Amma Anthony. I think I agree with him in almost all the points that he listed. Um, you know, when the COVID set in, we came up clearly that if care is not taken, we are likely to have uh, issues with food security in this year. Actually, we made a proposal to the ministry that the kind of COVID interventions that we're giving to other sectors Farmers were left out. And we think that the food security issues are things that we need to prioritize. For instance, monies were made available for SMEs to cushion them to remain in business. Farmers were classified under that same uh, category. I personally tried to facilitate for farmers to get, but they were constrained because they got to a point they need to present some documentation like their team numbers, business registration. And if you look at those farmers, that supply majority of the food we eat. About 80% uh, of them are smallholder farmers. Food business are informal. So those informal sector, I guess the large and the medium scale farmers who are able to register their business. So most farmers were actually left out of that. 
Last year, when the COVID set in, there were a whole lot of obstacles, of which uh, I heard my friend uh, actually give details. Delay in statements and what have you. So access to those farm inputs that we needed, like agro agrochemicals, like uh, machinery, that we needed for farming activities was actually a serious issue. So it actually affected farming in last year. Apart from this uh, man age issue, there were also natural factors. Because last year there was drought everywhere, and then in northern part of the country, around the 27th August to 7th September last year, there was serious flooding. So all that contributed to availability of food in the system. Now, apart from what has actually affected the Kenyan agriculture sector, last year there were influx of uh, people from uh, Nigeria, uh, Burkina, and Niger who also came to buy the small quantities that we have. But my concern last year was that while this was happening, and then we drew government attention to actually look at the issues, the National Food Buffer Store came up clearly to let all of us understand that there was no cause for alarm and that they have enough stock that will be released during the lane season to cater for the shortage. When I knew, I couldn't actually locate any of the buffer stock stock that they were talking about. So when we went to Chile, they said, oh, they know what they are talking about. So I was surprised that since we're getting wet, 40 farmers were complaining. Yet those uh, buffer stocks uh, were not actually released into the market. Uh, the same thing we are experiencing this year. When you take this year, I'm currently on the same. Uh, we started most of the maize growing areas in the southern part of the country and then the middle belt. If I say southern part of the country, I refer to Afran Plain. Middle belt, we refer to places like the Timan and Kwanza, we will see. Uh, you go to Ejra. Uh, all those is by now, these have been harvesting in previous years by now. They're even looking for people to buy their maize, and they are not getting. But this year, the, the rain still fever them. When they planned, there was serious drought, and uh, most of the crops were set off. So you go to those markets and you realize that the, the, the price of the size five of maize is still around 3.5 genetics around this time when we are supposed to be recording a bumper harvest. My experience in the northern part of the country is that at the beginning there was drought, but it wasn't that long. Then the rains came, so it was a big stable, and then I think the crops were initially looking good. Uh, but what happened is that we were all hoping that the promised government gave us on the planting for food and jobs, the supplies of that fertilizer was going to come. Along the line, fertilizer companies refused to supply, I made a follow-up most of them, and they said they would not supply. I think this time around, they actually, they were bold enough to tell government that they would supply if government failed to pay them for what they supplied last year. Uh, apart from that, the price government is asking them to supply under the subsidy is far lower compared to well prices of fertilizer. Because of COVID, it has affected production. So usually you know that when the demand is higher than supply, price will go high. So most of the countries that manufacture this fertilizer prefer to sell to countries like Asia and other places and to Africa. So our our companies are just travel to get fertilizer. So during the time that we need a fertilizer for fair application, it wasn't available. Now, when it was time for top dressing, where we need urea and other things, no company is able to supply any urea under the planting for food and So you come to the field and most of the crops are looking yellow as we speak. So if you put this success together, I think we need to be prepared ourselves. I don't foresee the year being better this year than last year. Okay, so I guess, um, Charles, what you're saying is that in short, it's an issue of productivity. We're not, we don't have enough, we haven't produced enough, and so there's a little bit of maybe scarcity or there's not as much, therefore the prices are going up because demand is high. Sure, it is a simple demand and supply chain. Anytime uh, demand is higher than supply, price will go high. And you see, one thing we are not realizing is that while cost of living, everything is going high. People expect farmers, the little that they get, to sell it at a, a lower price or stable price. No, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Last year, I bought a bag open market uh, for 120 Ghana cities. Today, the same bag you go and you are buying it at uh, 230 Ghana cities. Uh, Agrochemicals that we used to buy for 12 cities last year, this time when we are buying for 25 cities per liter. 
charter services. Last year, we were getting charter services around 75, 80 Ghana cities per acre. Today, we are getting it around 150, 160 Ghana cities per acre. So if a farmer will have to double the cost of production, and that farmer will still have to go and compete with any other person in the market to buy basic food items, um, like other things, and then pay school fees and do other things that price are high. When that farmer produces, it means that they, you have to factor in the cost of production, increasing cost of production. And that will be paid by the consumer. You understand? So apart from the cost of production itself, there are many people who are full up because they are not able to meet that cost of production. And all that will influence supply. So at the end of the day, the demand will surely be higher than supply. So we also have to adjust our prices so that we'll be able to, uh, to, to cope with the increasing cost of living in other areas. Okay. I'm personally on the field, I am farming. The same acre that I used uh, X amount to produce last year, this year I have to do 2X. Hmm. You understand? I have to double the cost. So when I have it between 20 or less, I also expect to sell it twice the price to be able to of meet course. my cost of production. Of course. And that's exactly what is happening. Okay. So we think that we actually need to sit on the same table all stakeholders, including government, to agree that this problem exists. Our worry is that it is always easier for government to play this when when they come up, trying to paint a picture for all of us to have the hope that things are okay. When in reality, uh, uh, the ground is not it's li like that. And that's where we continue to have this problem. The if government agree and admit that these issues are there, so let's sit together and see where we can put investment to help at this issue. I think we won't be at where we are. And if you don't still listen, next year is going to be worse than it is. Mm. Now, let me give you one typical example that we all need to be at the work out. I have some trash of a, a, a shogun in the Burkina. Sometimes we take some for our supplies here. Burkina days, as we speak, have tightened their body. Even bringing the food out is not possible. So it means that the different food, sometimes, you know, vegetables like tomatoes and other things, in recent times, we get them from Burkina Bay. And now they're taking their border that they're not going to allow anything to flow into them. So it means mm -hmm. that what we always import to support our, our industry is going to be a program. So we need to watch out for all those things. And then we also find a way of tightening our border. So that it's more one that we produce. We don't allow other foreigners to come and take it and leave us. Right. Wow. That sounds like um, quite a, a, a mixture of, of different issues at play here. Very disturbing about the fact that um, some of the things that we import, like tomatoes and sogum, um, if the borders are being tightened by Burkina Faso, for example, then obviously, you know, there'll be a lot more um, demand than there is supply. But let me move on and talk to Edward Karua. He's a general secretary for the General Agri Workers Union. Good morning and thank you for joining our conversation. Hello, Edward. Yeah, I'm listening. Good morning. Okay, hi, hi. So, I mean, I'm sure you've heard what Charles had to say um, about the different things that are affecting the food prices, mainly the fact that demand is higher than supply. And um, what are your thoughts on, on why food prices are going up and why they're going up at such, you know, a massive, they're, they're going up at such a massive um, rate? Yeah, I think Charles has laid clearly the reasons why food prices are going up and that uh, whole system, you know, what we say is not what is on the ground. Uh, I think that is my uh, uh, problem here. So Charles has laid out all the factors, you know, and it is, I don't know what I, I hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I'm saying that it is when we accept the reality on, on the ground that we can actually adopt appropriate solutions for for them um the ministry itself seems to be minister of agriculture i mean seems to be agreeing that there are real challenges on the ground but uh, when it comes to the way forward they say no there are no problems we are expecting a bumper harvest that is my biggest worry but what is happening is a, a culmination of uh, 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 policy challenges. In other words, I can say the policy failure. Because policy, you can measure policy by the outcomes and not 
by uh, the theory itself. So uh, this is a program that is supposed to produce enough food. How do we know that it, it is producing enough food? Okay, figures come out that oh, maize has gone up by uh, so much, over 100%, it has doubled. But when you go to the market, you don't find it. So it, will, it is a good point to let it go back and check our figures and see what is actually wrong. And then the practicality is that there is no fertilizer, even where it is, it came in late, all these challenges. And if you go back to officialdom, you know, if you go to a graphic uh, uh, front page report, which was on the uh, 16th July, and then uh, 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 earlier, the same man. <laughs> Okay, so we're having, um, I think Edward um, is having some data issues, so um, it's a bit slow. We'll try to reconnect um, so that we can um, talk to him about, about that, but we'd love to hear from you as well. Um, what's your shopping been like? Has your How's your, um, the money that you're spending, has it gone up? Are you spending a lot more for the things that you um, used to spend on? How much is chicken costing you now or meat or tomatoes or onions? And how is that affecting, um, you know, your way of life? We'd love to hear for you. This show is live and interactive, of course, on all the social media platforms. So drop us um, a message on our Facebook. We'll put up a post asking you and you can answer. And then, you know, we can have that conversation with you as well. But let me go back to Anthony um, Morrison, who's the CEO for the Chamber of Agribusiness. Anthony, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, I mean, we've spoken to Charles, um, you know, and we've gotten an idea of what's going on, you know, and, and all of that. But does that look like there's any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, is there is anything, is it going to get better? Or like Charles said, um, they're not expecting a greater yield this year than last year. And so demand will still be higher than supply. Um, so are we looking forward to another year of, you know, prices going up and there not being enough so we're having to pay more for, for our food. Um, yes, unfortunately, the situation will be quite wise um, this year uh, for this variable of reasons. First of all, uh, because the fertilizers came late, um, in most of the commercial farms' productivity, uh, seeds or maize are planted at the same time and, uh, and the fertilizers are applied at the same time. So at the time of the, the, their production, um, they had minimum quantity of fertilizer. So they only planted uh, almost about 30% of what they should have done uh, or they normally do. Now, as it stands now, majority of the commercial farms that we know have only done just about 48 to 52% of their uh, um, acreage available to them. That implies that over almost 40 to 45 percent of acres have not been cultivated this year. Now, another reason is that when the fertilizers came late and they were applied, the floods came in, especially in Upper West and Upper East. And some of um, the fertilizers, over 30 percent, have been washed away. So, if you go to some of the farming areas, you see the leaves of uh, most of the crops turning yellow. So that tells you that there is an inadequate uh, supply of some nutrients or components and combinations of fertilizers. Now, going forward, we are seeing, just as Charles have said, states and countries taking uh, protectionism for their food. So Burkina Faso is doing the same. We've seen on the international scene, Brazil and Argentina have begun to reduce the quantity of food that should be exported out of their country. So maize and rice and all this will be affected. So it is time as a country we begin to take strategic efforts. I'm just being elected that uh, the prices of maize for the same 50 kg is being sold at 150 cities. Okay. So we, we have a lot to do. Uh, this year, actually, prices are going to shoot up. And uh, for early part of next year, we're going to have challenges with our, our food systems. 
So we we'll need to import quite more. Um, what government needs to do is to make sure that when this year's uh, produce are ready, we provide a more path strategy so that we can um, store enough food across the country. There shouldn't be any allowance for export of any food. If for any reason someone needs to export food out of the country, that must come with approval from the ministry. And the reasons must be given. I'm saying this because um, some of the challenges we are having with the increase in food prices is because people have hoarded food. If you go to the borderlands, okay, in the northern regions, um, in the BA area, in the Vosta area, you've seen a number of warehouses that have sprung up. Food prices, the uh, food stuffs were taken out of the country arbitrarily without any permission. We do not have any security system. Nobody is being stopped. Why are you taking this food out of this country? Who has signed for it? Who has permitted you? And these foodstuffs have been stored in those uh, border towns, and they are now being imported back into the country and be sold to us at a very high prices. So we need to take some uh, such uh, measures to keep any export of food items out of this country. Now, at the other areas we need to look at is our vegetables. Um, we quite import over $150 million worth of uh, tomatoes from Burkina Faso. If Burkina Faso are not allowing um, us to have some of these things, what mitigations are we going to put in place for us to have uh, vegetables produced? Uh, we have the greenhouses. Are we going to support the greenhouse producers to increase productivity? Now, uh, we have a number of irrigation sites. Maybe it is time government looked at giving them to private sector. And it is also time for government to uh, private sector to come in into the industry and support. Now, the poultry farmers, we know a number of poultry farms have closed down as a result of the increase in uh, the veterinary drugs, increase in the, the additives that I spoke about, and uh, substantially the increase in maize, which constitutes over 70% of the feed uh, that they produce. So we, we, we were told that there were, some going to, there were going to be some imports of maize to support the poultry farmers. We are not seeing this as we speak. So some of these poultry farmers are closing down. They are selling off their pullets. Some are selling off their laying beds, which we think it doesn't augur well for the industry. The poultry industry is the biggest uh, uh, employer in the agriculture uh, food value chain. So we need to protect that industry so well. We import well over 1.2 billion worth of frozen chicken annually. And uh, I, we think that uh, that could be invested easily in the country. We we'll produce uh, enough. We employ and we pay a lot of taxes. Moving forward from that side, what is government's own uh, strategy to addressing this food challenge? We have issues of climate change. We have issues of uh, food items going all over the place, the prices. We have issues of uh, post-harvest losses. As we speak, some of the um, rice harvesters, uh, rice farmers who have harvested their farm, uh, their produce on the farm, uh, they've seen some uh, seeds that are uh, some rice that are regenerating. This is because uh, there is a lot of rainfall, so okay. they are not able to uh, dry their produce early. Okay. So we are beginning to see post-harvest losses, not only in maize but also in uh, rice and other uh, cereals and grains. Okay, Anthony, so what we want to do is that we want to go to uh, Malamata Market so that we can really get a look at what's happening there this morning. And Izolai um, is over there right now. Izol, if you can hear me, over to you. All right, so the Malata market is the usual suspect when we want to serve the prices of foodstuffs because of its proximity to Joy FM. It's not too far from Joy FM, so we take a drive and then we just come to and get to ask and find out what the prices are looking like because people, there's been a lot of talk about the fact that prices keep going up and are escalating. So we're here to actually find out. Indeed, if you look at the inflation figures, the inflation figure for August says 9.7. Now, what the 9.7, as I was indicating earlier, doesn't tell you is how the prices have moved for the various or the specific commodities. We're going to find out. And so 
I have come across a couple who have come here to do their shopping, their regular shopping. And what we're going to do is we're going to be speaking with them and we're going to walk with them as they go through the market to get to do their regular shopping. So you come, let's get to meet them. So it's, this is Abigail and that's the husband. They come to shop together. That's romantic, isn't it? So yeah, nice to meet you, uh, Abigail. Nice. Abigail, are you going to give me your full name? Oforiwa oh, Abigail. Oforiwa oh, Abigail. Uh, what's your surname? Uh, it's Oforiwa. Oh, how can Oforiwa be your surname? Okay, so what's your name? Solomon Yabua. <laughs> Solomon Yabua. And if that's your wife, then yeah. she's uh, Abigail Yabua or? Yeah, yeah so Mrs. Yabua. <laughs> Mrs. Yabua. Why are you hiding there, Yabua? <laughs> okay, so I can see that you've, uh, you're buying, you've come to buy. Have you bought the palm nut already? I'm, I'm yet to buy. Okay. So uh, Abigail is coming to buy palm nut, which means that um, there's some abenquang on the way. Yeah, as you can see. Okay. How regularly do you come to the market? Every two weeks. Every two weeks. So you buy enough to last you two weeks? Yes, yeah. Okay, so you go ahead and uh, you buy your your palm nut. Yeah. What's up, mommy? I'm very new. I'm too long about it. Yeah. Hey, now I'm so. Anna, baby, I'm here. I'm just saying, so now you're not even here. Okay, so it, it's eight CDs now, but how much was it being sold previously? It was five CDs. How, how long ago? Oh, a month ago. Month ago. Okay, so in this case, she's explaining that it has to do because it's not, it's because it's raining. Yeah. What does the rain have to do with the a shortage of abenquang? Okay, so the explanation is that when it's raining, they typically wouldn't climb to harvest the palm nut because they're saying that it's uh, there may be snakes on on the palm nut tree so that's why it, it you tend to get this experience where the palm nut or the price of palm nut will go up when it's raining so all right so let's get the palm nut and we can get the other ingredients that will be required to make the abenquang Today, so you're, you're Mr. Yabua, you want a Ben Kwang and what? Uh, and at times, ghost meat. Okay, okay but what's the, what's the soup going to go with? It's going to uh, fufu. Oh, okay. So is that what you're having for lunch? Yes, <laughs> that's what we're having for lunch. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so yeah, maybe when we're done with the show and uh, we've signed off, now I can follow Mr. Yabua, Mr. and Mrs. Yabua to the house, see if. I can get some Ben Kwang as well. I showed you. Okay, so they're just about done with the um, with the Ben Kwang. Okay, so as it is, there's going to be quite a bit of load. So how are you going to manage that? We we have the tire to help us. Okay. So typically. When people, when the ladies, and in fact, when everybody else comes to the market, in fact, when I walked in, I had people, the, the Kayaye coming my way and asking me, do I need a head porter? And I told them, no, I don't. But apparently, Abigail, but it's, it's typical when people come to the market and you're coming to buy quite a bit, then you need a head porter who will be carrying it as you go through. Okay, so when, where are we going to next? We are going in for um, a ripe plantain and a green one. Okay. Okay. So All right. So let's follow um, Abigail and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Yeboah as they go in there to go and get some ripe plantain, and they would also buy some green plantain as well. But yes, if you're joining us, we're at the Malata Market where we're coming to shop for foodstuffs 
and I'm with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Yebwa Abigail. And then we also have our head porter who's following us. It's all in a bit to get to understand what the, what the situation is like with food prices to see if it's true that food prices have gone up in recent times and by how much. So that way, Mr. if Mr. Yabwa is sitting back in the house and it's only Abigail who comes and Mr. Yabwa is wondering that, well, but in fact, let me find out from Mr. Mr. Yabwa, you know, you, Abigail, you take the lead. You take them. Mr. Mr. Why are you following the, uh, your <laughs> wife to the market? Because this time around, the money have been given her. When he came back, you said, "Oh, so low. the money is not enough, so you have to add up." So today, I decided to follow her oh. and see how the reason why. The so what? You not. think that your wife is following you, Chobo? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that your wife is, you know, because, following you, Chobo? Uh, 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 the price has gone up uh, too much. Uh, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it's like you don't trust your wife. No, it's not that I don't trust my wife. <laughs> it's not that I don't trust. So Why are you following her to come and find out the prices? I want to be sure. You want I want to be, to be sure. Okay, let's let's yes. buy yeah, some let's plantain. plantain <laughs> So obviously the plantain seller is not very excited that I'm I'm poking a microphone in her in her face. She's not she's not interested. But madam, a free baby customer service. In here, I know I see my kakra. Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yo, sorry. So, okay, so she's saying that I should have uh, alerted her before, but this is a moving camera. We're moving with Abigail. And so, wherever Abigail goes, that's where we go. So, I apologize. Yeah, Mr. Why? But you're frozen. <laughs> oh, maybe so, Dean, man. Yes, I made a camera and a bit too, so maybe so, Dean, KK. <laughs> She's wondering why I'm asking for her name. Okay. Four pieces. Now, they are bringing so far, I think, to this. And someone said, "Yeah, green one. You been here? Yeah, I ain't kept talking about any things to this. But you're my ancient. Hey, four pieces. Wow. But wouldn't you ask for a reduction? Yeah, a reduction yeah. When she's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you prefer to put it all together before you yeah. ask for the reduction? Well, I want to see the differences. So she had, we're told that the four fingers, as you have it, that's, that's 10 CDs. Okay. But how much were you buying it previously? Oh, in, fact, hold, in fact, hold on, don't say it, because if you say it, uh, it, will, it would be difficult for you to bargain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just hold on when she puts it all together and then we can get to see uh, how that goes. Okay. I don't think it's one. I know I have ten cities, and I know we have five cities. Simple five cities, sir. Okay, so she says she's not excited that um, the way she's going about it. Okay, why don't you just say you're buying ten cities? Just get your ten cities and. Mommy, ten cities, then I. We don't want to piss her off any further. Yeah. <laughs> she isn't happy about it. She's not happy about it. And rightfully so. She's saying that we should have told her that we're going to have a conversation like this with her. But this is real time. And so I've apologized for her that we couldn't have done it the way um, we should have typically done it. All right. So she's getting a polythene bag and then she can bag the items. 
Oh, oh Madame Bra. So you're getting so you're getting ten CDs for for the green plant ten. I'm a ten CDs. So how many pieces is that? Six. Watch it. Eh. Oh, seven, yes. Mm. Seven. Mm. Mm. Say now, one tea, when you mind So, how many pieces for the green planting? Seven. Seven. seven pieces. Can you lift them so we get to see? So, the small one, seven pieces, we got this for 10 cities. Right, how much typically would you buy them? It's going to be five cities or the same thing. The same, the same thing. Yeah. So the plantain, you say, yeah. the and price? This, this is a, a little bit grown, so it's it's okay. It's cool. Okay. So you wouldn't say that there's, there's been an increase in yeah. the prices of plantain. So the plantain is fine. Okay, great. So we'll try the ripe plantain, and we also get to find out what it is like, what the prices are like. When we get to find out the prices of the ripe plantain, the coffee broke man sellers at Lagos Avenue at East Legon, please. We're coming after you. Because if we're able to buy, if we know the price, then we can estimate how much you should be selling your Kofi Brookman to us. So we'll come to you um, in a bit and get to find out. All right, so let's move to the ripe plantain. We're going to buy some ripe plantain. So typically as it is, once you buy, the headquarter is with you. You just put your the stuff you've bought in the pan, and then you go on. That way it frees you. And you're also offering, you know, some employment to, to the head porter. If you want to carry it all by yourself, then you are being a little chisel. Let's spread a bit of the money. But um, uh, head porter, you're frozen. Kaya are you? You're frozen. Aisha. Aisha. Uh, Uber charge you and say, Ah, who name say now charging? Usually, I would want to negotiate with her <laughs> before she carries it. That when we get to the end, she doesn't tell me she's going to charge me ten CDs, and I don't have ten CDs to pay you. Okay, so, madam, mifi mifi join news. Many or more ena nam ena yeni yeh yeh share prices no yeni amane bo sini yeti e. Inti set one mind say the camera and better also. Ah, oh, inti. Okay, inti want to mean ton eh my. Okay, so well, she is nicer to us at least. So let's go get something else and then we can come back for the right plantain. Okay, so the next thing they're looking for is the is the yam. Okay, so they've decided to buy the ripe plantain from here. Good morning. Good morning, madam. So they say the very big ones, five for ten cities. I can see a new ten cities. And I get one five and nine. And five cities. Okay, two so you be a four, be a three, and I know five cities. Seven of my own, and I'm going to be a little bit Okay, so she it looks like she's she's gonna get a, a a nice deal 
from the plantain. So how many pieces are those? All right, so she's making it six for 10 cities. Oh, it's six, I checked. <laughs> And I'll bet so back one my Okay, nice. Yeah. 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 So we got we got seven pieces. And uh well yeah. That typically, you know, typically that's what I do. When I used to go to the market and uh, to buy for my mom, I'd always ask that, you know, I get something extra on top of it. So it it worked. I guess uh, because we're also carrying we're, we're having the camera with us. She wanted to be nice. Madam Yafro say? Ama. Abba. Abba Yadase. So, yeah, we got uh, seven pieces for 10 CDs. So, so if we getting seven pieces of plantain for 10 CDs, the women or the traders, the people who are selling Kofi Brookman, at East Legon. We've got seven pieces for 10 CDs. So you have to be nice to us. Yes, we know you have to buy charcoal. You have to put your profit on it. But ideally, you should be able to give it to us at a more reasonable price. All right, so we're looking for yam. We're looking for yam now to also get to see what the situation is. So, Abigail, for the plantain, the right plantain, does it mean, what, how would you, what would you see of the prices? The, they are cool, as the green plantain. They are very, very affordable, okay. yeah. Okay, so you wouldn't say there's been an increase in no, the, no, in the no, price? No. Yeah. All right. Okay, so plantain, the prices are moderate. There are no complaints about it, so this lady, is pointing us to where we can get yam. Oh, there's yam here. Okay. Bayera. Yeah, top Bayera. So it's all stuck somewhere in there. So she says they, they have some that's going for seven, they have some that's going for eight CDs. Right, so we want to see what the the eight CD uh, yam tuber of yam also looks like. So she's going to bring some some out, then we can get to see. So they are really the same. Which are five and seven and eight. And I'm going to test in my prize now. Say, dear son, near the age eight. They also can call near the age seven. Son, I am. Yeah, if you pay, if you pay eight yen, what do you mean by seven? You know, me pay, Cassiano. But I'm sick of seven cities. In sync, I'm going to be eight yen, I'm seven cities. Let me, dear mommy. Okay, but ideally, if you look at it, it doesn't look like there's much difference no, in the no, sizes. No, no, no. There's not. Uh, What's that? That's only nine pairs. Same thing. Okay. 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 So why don't you, I would want to go in there, if she's going to give me the 8 CDs for 7 CDs, okay. I'll go in there and look for a big 8 CDs. Okay. So, I want a big one. 
Yeah, so look through and uh, pick one that is, is big enough. If she's giving you a deal, you must get a good deal. Yeah. I wait here. I said, I wait Okay. It's it's become difficult for you to choose. It looks yes. like. Me too too. Say say we not eight is not a mama um seven city so okay, okay. Mama share we we see as the mood Okay, so she's found one that she thinks is it's big enough. But can you imagine? Ideally, if we had a market where we're using scales, mm -hmm. then you can weigh it, put it on the scale, and then you can say. Yes, this one is heavier, which means it's bigger, so you can, you're prepared to pay a bit more for it. But as it is, she's looking at the, the sizes, and the sizes, you can't quite be sure. It's not a standard way of measuring. That's why the Ghana Standards Authority has been trying to push the use of scales for some time now. It hasn't quite taken off, because I'm yet to see one scale in this entire market. Maybe the people who use that skill will be the butchers because they tend to do that. All right. All right, so we're getting the, we're picking the yam and then we'll move on to another place and get some other items. But yeah, we're at the Malata market if you're just joining us and we're just going around to get to find out what the situation is like. Now, the good thing, one good thing about this exercise is that Mr. Yebwa can confirm. Mr. Yebwa can confirm whether the wife is using the money judiciously or whether the wife is full in trouble, where she will claim so much money. So what? She, you give her regularly how much chop money? Okay, most of the time I give her two hundred. For the, for, for the shopping? The, for the shopping, yes. Most and then time, you yes. buy fewer things. Yeah, fewer other things. And then when you come out, and then you say the price has gone up. So, so today you, should, you should add? You should add more, money. yes. Meanwhile, your salary too hasn't increased. It hasn't increased. You see, oh. The that salary always happens to suffer the stunted growth. The salary increase. That everything increase. else increases. Yes, everything has been increased, but the salaries. Okay. They are stable. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's let's move on. Where, where, what are we going to get next? We'll get the the tomatoes and other beans. Like tomatoes. tomatoes and beans. And that's Israel um, coming to us from the Malamata market. And he's having a lot of fun with Mr. and Mrs. Yeboah. Mr. Yeboah followed Mrs. Yeboah to the market because... He doesn't believe that. She's bringing him legitimate prices. So she's always come to ask for more money. Charlie, wives, they suffer. Can you imagine this Monday morning? Your husband is following you to the market. Unnecessary stress. Anyway, um, let me wrap up with our guests who have been so kind to stay with us on Zoom. Anthony Morrison, CEO, Chamber of Agribusiness, Mr. Edward um, Carraway and of course Mr. Charles Nyaba. Um, gentlemen, can I just have um, your closing comments? What are we to look forward to um, the rest of the year? Christmas is coming, you know, we want to be able to get our chickens, our eggs, our goats, all of that. Are we going to have a good Christmas or are we going to have to be watching our pockets and, um, and cutting our meat a little bit smaller so that everybody in the family can get some food? Let me start with you, um, Edward. Well, um, we should expect that uh, things will not be good. Uh, we should save more towards uh, Christmas because prices will still remain high. Mm. And uh, once it's Christmas, no matter what, it's about one day, two days, or one week, at least we can still enjoy ourselves when we save towards it. But we shouldn't expect prices to fall so much, even if they will fall at all, because around that time, there will also be harvest since uh, the harvest will, would have taken place. So we expect that prices will stabilize a little or even come down. But if it does not, uh, certainly Christmas will be very difficult. 
Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Mr. Edward Carraway, General Secretary General Agri Workers Union. Um, let me also ask Mr. Anthony Morrison, um, what can we expect for Christmas this year? Hello, Anthony. Yes, hello. Yes, okay, so what kind of Christmas uh, can we expect this year? Well, um, I don't want to be a, doom, a prophet of doom, but um, it's going to be a very difficult Christmas because um, uh, production on the side of farmers have not changed. Uh, we haven't seen uh, government bringing in any agriculture intervention policies. So prices and challenges are still going to be the same. Um, we are going to buy our poultry uh, uh, products at a much higher price. A crate of eggs will be selling about 30 Ghana cities or more. Wow. Um, a bed, a bed of um, a layer or the, um, the hard chicken we'll be buying, we're going to go up between 55 to 65 Ghana cities. Um, so we shouldn't expect a rosary or a merry all Christmas as we used to. Uh, it's going to be a challenging environment. Uh, let me end that um, the challenges we are seeing are all as a result of the policy non-alignment and um, uh, the, the, the way we also uh, deploy irrigation, uh, sorry, agriculture in the country is not the best. We, uh, at the district level, uh, MOFA doesn't have a role to play, no direct role. Uh, the regional coordinating council are uh, all over the place and uh, we need to find a more strategic way to address the challenges. And this is where we need to start looking at having the Agriculture Development Authority which is a trade regulator rather than a policy and implementation ministry. Now, all the challenges we are having are so strong. They are with us. The ministry is kind of powerless. So and that also borders on the kind of policy we are running as a country. Uh, our agriculture sector policy over the, four, the past four years hasn't been the best. Uh, planting for food and jobs has not been very successful. Uh, we need to find a way to mitigate the current hardships of farmers, and it's very critical. Uh, the minister has to sit up. I'm not missing my words this morning. Um, I receive a lot of calls, and I know what I'm, I'm talking about. The minister has to sit up. Uh, if, if something is not done in the next two months, uh, Ghana will surely have a, a food shortage uh, crisis at hand. Thank you. Wow. OK, well, thank you very much for that, Mr. I am Anthony Morrison. Very worrying there that if something is not done, Ghana will definitely have a food shortage crisis in the next few months. We'll keep our eyes on this and uh, maybe get a response from the minister on what the government is doing to make sure that we have enough food on our tables over the next few months.